ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் போஸ்ட் மேன் அண்ட் இன் திஸ் சீரீஸ் ஆஃப் வீடியோஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் தி வேரியஸ் டூல்ஸ் டிப்ஸ் அண்ட் டெக்னிக்ஸ் அபவுட் போஸ்ட் மேன் அண்ட் பிஃபோர் வி மூவ் ஆன் டு நோ அபவுட் வாட் இஸ் போஸ்ட் மேன் அண்ட் ஹவு கேன் வி யூஸ் இட் லெட்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் சி வாட் ஆர் ஆல் தி advantages and why why someone should know about the postman tool so when discussing about that we have five points or five reasons to know about why someone should learn or why sh- someone should know about postman tool and before we move on to the video this is me wasan shanmugam i request you all to subscribe to our channel to our little slow youtube channel if you have not subscribed yet like share and ask your questions and comments in the comment section So let's now go to the video. So the first reason that you should know about Postman tool is the testing and debugging APIs. The tool Postman provides a simple and user-friendly interface for testing APIs and we can easily send HTTP requests to our APIs, view the response and debug any issues. So it's very easy, simple to test and debug and that's the first reason. and when coming to the second point the automation of api testing postman has a powerful testing framework so this is very light but still it's very powerful it has a very powerful testing framework that enables us to write and run automated tests for our apis we can easily create test suites and integrate them into our continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline and then when it comes to the third point which is the collaboration and sharing postman enables teams to collaborate and share api documentation and test cases we can easily create collections of requests and share them with our team members and then when it comes to the fourth reason to know about to learn about postman tool which is the increased productivity with postman we can quickly create and test apis which helps us to develop and iterate faster it also reduces the time and effort needed to document and test apis manually and then when it comes to the last reason to know about to learn about postman is its cross platform compatibility postman is available as a desktop application for windows mac and linux as well as a chrome browser extension which means that we can use it on any operating system overall postman is an essential tool for anyone who is involved in api development and testing and it can help improve productivity collaboration and testing efficiency so now let's see about what is postman tool so postman is a popular tool used for testing developing and documenting apis so apis which means we all know which is application programming interface and this tool allows the developers to easily send the http request to apis and receive responses without having to write code from scratch in fact postman provides a graphical user interface that makes it easy to create and manage requests and it also includes powerful features for automating api testing and integrating tasks with postman we can send we can create and send get post put patch delete and other types of http requests and we will see them one by one in our next videos and even we can also add custom headers parameters and request bodies to our request and view the response in a structured format such as json or xml additionally postman provides a variety of features for organizing and managing collection of requests as well as for creating and executing automated tests and scripts postman is also available as a desktop application for windows mac and linux as we have already seen which is one of the major reason for using the postman tool for most of the major api testing so that's a short introduction about the postman tool and the reasons to learn about postman 
So let's now see how to build or how to send a GET request with few examples. So here is the home screen which we normally get when we open the Postman for the first time and then once we create our workspace we can see that in the dashboard so we can go to the workspace and here is the screen where it shows the collections it shows the APIs if we have and then the environments which we can create and then if we do want any mock servers we can create them and in case if we have any monitor setup we can create them we can add it here and then when it comes to the flows we can create our flow so now let's see the first request which is creating a get request so before we see about creating a get request let's see what is a get request so get request is one of the most common http method used for retrieving data from a server it's used to request data from a specified resource and returns a representation of the resource the data is returned in the body of the response message and it can be in any format such as it can be in html or xml or json or even plain text so now let's see how to create a get request so we have opened the postman tool and then we are in our workspace and then when we click on the new dialog box we'll have to choose the http request and then once you choose the http request in fact we have lots of other options as well in case if we want to create a WebSocket request we can create it in case if you want a grpc or a graphql request collection environment so we will see them one by one in our next videos so for now let's create a basic http request and it's going to be a get request and then we have multiple options here so let's choose get and then in the url i have an example url here let me paste it here so we have the get the url pasted here and in the headers tab in case if we want to add any necessary headers we can add it but headers are usually not required for get requests so we can skip this step and now let's go to the send button which is on the right side so here you can see the send button and when we click on send button we can see the response so here is the body the response body and here we can see the user id is one and his id is one and then we have the title and then the body of the response and then we can see the raw format of it we can even see the preview of it and even we can visualize in case if we have a proper value to display and then we will check for cookies so in case if we have received any cookies we can check this cookies option in here so since in this particular request for this get request we don't have any okay so we can't see any cookies in here and then when we go to the headers so here we can see the different header options the content type and the other options as well the date the content type is application or json and then the transfer encoding is chunked the connection is keep alive so we can see the various other header options and then so here we can configure or we can write any test which we want or which we can use to automate the debugging so since this is a very first and very basic get request so we haven't done it so when it comes to the status part so here we have to check the status so the basic status here is 200 ok which is a standard response for successful http request and in fact there are different other response codes something like 302 or 400 404 500 503 so this in this post request the response is sorry this get request the response is valid and we have got 200 and this is the time taken for the response so the time taken is 155 milliseconds and here we can see the breakup of this particular response and we have got the socket initialization which is the initial step and then we have got the dns lookup which is the dynamic the naming and then we have got the tcp handshake and then after that we have got the ssl handshake the transfer star and then the final download so in this we were able to see the different layers of testing so different layers of how a service or how a request is sent to the server and then after that we'll get that we are getting the response and here is the size the response size of this particular request which is 1.25 kb and out of which the body has just 292 bytes and the header 
has 985 bytes. Yes, if you want to save this as an example, you can save this request as an example. You can save the response to the file. So in case if we want to record some file, we can just save it in a, in a location where we can save it. And then in case if we want to write any test, you can just click on this. Uh, this is to just know about test. But in case if you want to write any test, you can just add it here. And then we can use it for testing this get request. So we will see them in our next videos one by one. So with that, I come to an end. So, so far, I believe this video would have been very useful to you. You must have known about what is Postman, what are the reasons to know about Postman, and a simple GET request that we did with a Postman tool. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Vasanth Shanmugam and Little Slaw.